Hey everybody, welcome and benvindo. See what I did there? Welcome and welcome, welcome. Happy Friday. Hope you guys are all having a great day. So uh, going a little bit earlier today, five o'clock hour was good, but I'm trying to see if going a little earlier works better. So this week we're going to be talking about the aftermath of last week's, last Saturday's Arnold Classic South America in Brazil. It was a very close, close win for Rafael Brandeo over Tony Burton. Um, controversial win as it always is when two guys are very close because anytime you have two guys that are very close, there's going to be a lot of people unhappy after the show. Great example of that was the Mr. Olympia last year. We saw Derek Lunsford and Hadi Chupan going down to the wire. I honestly had no idea which way it was going to go. In the end, Hadi Chupan lost out to Derek. Hadi's fans are very upset because it was so close, man. You could have given it to Hadi. And in this case, yeah, you could probably make a legitimate case for Tonio, Tonio winning, but it was close, and they went with <clears throat> Rafael. Now, <clears throat> the issue that compounded everything was that uh, Tonio went on a pro- uh, podcast called the Muscle Discord Podcast shortly after. I think he did it on Sunday. It was out on Monday, and made some statements that uh, rubbed people the wrong way, <clears throat> talking about the show, talking about the results. Uh, I have three of those clips for you to listen to. Here's the first one. Let's take a look at what Raphael had to say to the host of Muscle Discord. And uh, the problem with prejudging, because I hear everyone saying, oh, it's because, you know, he didn't, I didn't have enough oil. Well, at prejudging, yeah. no one had enough oil besides That's him. That's true. Besides him. And yes. The favoritism role was okay. crazy. I want to like, ask you. Okay. Like, I mean, I don't want to sound like a like poor sport or anything. Like I yeah. like I say, I've said this before, his physique and I, we have similar physiques, you know what I mean? Yeah. I knew it was gonna be a battle with him. So I didn't take it easy. But like when I say like backstage, he had like 10 people oiling him up. Yeah. They're even like rolling his face okay. to where we're asking to get oiled and like we'll get a few pats here and there. And they're like, okay, you're good to go. Yeah. And then when they called us up to line up, we couldn't pump up no more, right? Yes. Well, he was down there still pumping up. And when the expediter lady was like, well, if he's not up here, then oh well. They stopped us from walking on and called him until he came before going on. So there was that. And then if you watch it, how many times he exited the stage because he couldn't breathe. Yes. He was, yeah, he was walking off stage and he was bending over because he couldn't breathe. And I walked over to get my forehead dried off. Yeah. And they told us no. It was like, no, you have to stay on the line. So I was like, all right, like this is weird. Wow. Like you see it, Vito actually wiped the sweat off my head for me. <laughs> yeah. Like but you see it. But um, oh yeah, like it, he, he was highly favored. I get his hometown, yeah. but then Still. it was just honestly what 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 rubbed me the wrong way was when we were doing our back double shots and okay. he did his arm thing. You know, he held his arm out there so he couldn't pull out. And uh, I didn't get mad about it. This is bodybuilding. You know, I actually like yeah. that type of thing. Um, but when the expediter came up, he came to me and looked at me and said, yo, what are you doing? What are you trying to do? And so I was like, what? Like, all right, this is the game we're playing. Okay. Like, yes. Okay, now I get it. But um, I don't know. Like, you see it. Like, when we yeah. did the ab and thigh shot, he jumped right in front of me. Yeah, he had to he, move over. Yeah, yeah. You know, any other judge, like if it was Tyler or someone, they would have told him to stop that, stay in your spot and hit your pose. Okay, so okay, so yeah, very, very serious accusation there that serious uh, favoritism was being exhibited toward Rafael, the hometown guy. He was the only one that was given oil, it sounds like, according to Tonio. Uh, sounds like they weren't allowed to pump up, but he was. So, you know, that that's very uh, <laughs> damning against the competition for others to hear. I mean, it would discourage people from America, the USA, or maybe other countries too, from going down there to compete, knowing that if they feel that they're going to be basically discriminated against and the, the guys from Brazil are going to be treated much better than them and given at advantages, I mean, that's an advantage if you don't have oil and somebody else does. Uh, let's go to the next clip. It's, this is, uh, again, about how Rafael wasn't conditioned. And I totally agree with Tonio. Rafael was not as conditioned as Tonio. Tonio had much better condition especially in the back poses, it was very, very evident. Uh, but let's hear what he is. Yeah, still twisting a little more. It's just going to give you a little bit more depth yeah. there. So, uh, yeah, because you can beat people in that shot. Like, damn, I was like, man, if you can hit that. Yeah, that's by far, like, probably my weakest pose ever. Yeah. Like, <laughs> And I just told people, like, he definitely beat me with the side triceps all yeah. the way. But 
any other pose. And I mean, I said it online, I'll say it again. He wasn't conditioned enough to win any pose. Yeah. You know, that's if you had someone like Steve or Tyler judging, yes, he's not making a call out with that conditioning. No. And then to even speak on the his glutes, if you've seen the stream, he has lumps in his glutes. It was, ugh, it was like, man, would you like, are you done dieting here? It looks like. <laughs> yeah. So it's kind of like a lot of. <sighs> so that's why when I seen the scorecards, it was just kind of like, yo, he smoked me that bad with all that going on. I shouldn't yeah. compete. And, you know, and it took, you know, for my woman and even you know my coach and everything to be like, hey, ignore that. Ignore it. He was like, because in my head, like, like I said, I told him, I was like, yo, I think I'm done for a while. I was like, if that's what's beating me, I need to stop for a minute. So, I mean, it, it did get deep, you know what I mean? Yeah. But, it, it gets in more. Okay, so that was another one that here he's saying the basically uh, criticizing the judging, saying he shouldn't have beat him in any poses. Um, condition, his condition, Rafael's condition was so, so poor in comparison to his. Um, you know, I, I, I understand his argument at the same time. If someone has – Better body parts, better poses, like the side. Raphael beats him in the side shots. There's no, I don't think anyone's questioning that. Um, Tonio beats him in the back shots. It doesn't, it, it's not scored that way as far as uh, X amount of poses won by this guy versus X amount of poses. It's not exactly scored like that. It's an overall picture, but you guys can give me give your comments. But still, here he's saying that the results would have been far different. He probably, he's insinuating basically that had someone else been head judge. Instead of, a, I believe it was Tamara, was it Tarek? It was one of the El Gundis. Correct. I'm sorry if I don't know which one. You guys can correct me. So I'm sure you guys know. Um, but if Steve Weinberger or Tyler Manny had been head judge, Tony was basically expressing the sentiment that Raphael would not have gotten a call out with, the, with those conditions, and he certainly wouldn't have won. Tony would have won. Uh, let's listen to the final, the final clip from the Muscle Discord podcast with Tony. Uh, this, is, this is basically saying how – uh, he was a little worried about winning because it's uh, Rafael is so popular in Brazil. Of course he is. That Tonio was fearful that if he had won, there might have been rioting. There might have been some kind of personal repercussions against him. So this is the last one. Let's hear that. Six points. Yeah. Five points. Yeah, by uh, by six points. Six points. Sorry. Yeah. And like, I was like, okay, let me look at the scorecard. It's gonna be close. It's gonna be like a one point. Six points. Nah, they, yeah, they said he smoked me. <laughs> oh. uh, I, you know, so, I seen it. And it was one of those things where it's like, it's his hometown. And honestly, <laughs> and nothing against the judges. I don't know who the judges were. I've yeah. never seen any of them before. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I think they're all from Brazil. Yeah. But, That's um, what I thought. Yeah. The crowd, I feel like, chose, their, chose the winner. Um, yeah. Bro, when I say it was loud, like... Okay. They were louder than the music. I couldn't you know? hear because and they didn't. Have, they didn't. We couldn't. They weren't displaying the crowd noise for some reason. So yeah, I did. I had no clue the crowd was. Oh, it's when he walked on stage for his routine. It yeah. sounded like a concert. Okay. And then when anyone else walked out, crickets. Okay. Like quiet. <laughs> so I was like, wow, you know, that's a mind, you know, mind fucking. Yeah, show. holy. But okay. then when you're uh when he's calling out all these places, yep. and uh, he's calling out for second place. You know, I'm thinking, I'm like, okay, there's no way we're not walking with this one. Like, he's out of shape. He didn't, he wasn't prepping. Like, I was like, there's there's no way. You know what I mean? And uh, all you hear is Rafa, Rafa. And they're like, loud to where I looked at the crowd. And I was like, yo, if he doesn't win, it might real, it, Get bad. it might be true. It might be bad. Yeah. You know, because even before, like, uh, a, a few videos that Dragon posted, you yeah. hear people say, do you have your security with you? Because yeah, if you man. win... It's gonna be bad, and I didn't, you know, believe it. I'm like, okay, it's a joke, like whatever. Yeah. But no, nah, like I even had a few Brazil people from Brazil come up to me when I went to use the bathroom or oh. um, before finals. They're saying it, you know, if this was anywhere else, you would win. But because it's Brazil, he's gonna win, and it would be bad if he didn't. And I'm like, yo, is this that? Like that serious? It is, man. It is. Yeah. So anyone who's followed. The Arnold Classic South America for it's been around for about 10 years now. Off the top of my head, I can think of a couple guys from the US who won Juan Morel won it. There was no riot. And every year there's always competitors from Brazil, always, because it's right there in Brazil. 
Nobody attacked Juan Morel. I remember Big Rami won it. Big Rami's not Brazilian. Nobody got upset. I get it, though. Rafael is extremely popular. He's got 1.6 million followers on Instagram. He's by far the best open bodybuilder from Brazil. They have one of the greatest classic physique guys in the world, obviously second best in the world, Ramon Dino. So they're very, very passionate. They're very proud of their champions. Yes, Brazilians are very loud. I can attest to that. I remember the first year they did the Wellness Olympia, which was, was it 2020 or 2021? I think it was 2020. And man, uh, I was I was up front and the huge contingency from Brazil behind me were cheering for Francielli and some other, Angela and some of the other top women. And my ears were like bleeding. Um, but anyway, continuing with this Rafael versus Tonio controversy, it sort of spilled over onto social media where they, they basically went at each other uh, on Instagram. And I screenshotted a couple of these just in case that they deleted them. So Rafael answered all these. Uh, uh, first of all, I need to need to explain that there was another part of the muscle discord interview where he said that uh, Rafael let him train at his private gym up to a point and then he wouldn't let him train anymore. Anyway, so this was Rafael's, this is Rafael's answer to Tonio's interview. I can explain some things to you that you either didn't understand or pretend you didn't understand. Firstly, my gym is private and was already scheduled to be closed a few days before the show just for me and my team. And even though you were going to compete against me and are not close to me, I allowed you and your team to train and create content within my gym. And I didn't even complain that you clogged the toilet and trained in your underwear. Wow, clogged the toilet. That is, what a, what a terrible accusation. <laughs> About the backstage, uh, I've clogged toilets in my time. About the backstage, I only had two companions, my coach and my wife. All the other people who were there were not there for me, but for their own sponsors. But we are in Brazil where, thank God, I have many friends. I was lying with my towel on the same backstage floor as you, there weren't any exclusive privileges for me. You even had more companions than me. Regarding my oil painting, is oiling, each athlete has to take care of their own. I have a friend who was doing this for me, and you should have had someone on your team. You should have someone on your team who can do this for you, too. It wasn't a championship that provided this especially for me. Regarding the result, is second place, when you complain that you were judged unfairly, you were not speaking ill of me, you were speaking ill of the judges. They are professionals trained to see who is the best as a whole and not just in one muscle group. Probably referring to his back. Tonio does have a better back than just about anybody. Regarding my physique, it's not my fault if you at your best weren't able to beat me. You at your maximum conditioning still had no separation in your quads and hamstrings, no detail in the shoulders and chest, and competed with little muscle volume. And regarding my attitude backstage, I was there to focus on the competition and not to make friends. If you really want to make friends, this wasn't the time. Finally, secure your qualification and see you at the Olympia or not. Respect my country. Respect my authority. Uh, so, well, that's me. Sorry, guys. <laughs> didn't mean, really didn't mean it. Then he posted this in his stories, Rafael. Some people cry. Some people work. I like to work. Algumas pasados coram. I can't read Brazilian, Portuguese. Uh, so, Tonio fired back at that. So, this is the last big response I'll read. Tonio says, number one, no one showed any disrespect other than what you did on stage to myself and Vito, and then gave a push at the end of it. Number two, during mandatory poses you got in front of me during Ab and Thigh. To me, it's funny. I laughed about it. Three, to all your fans commenting on my page and even on pics about my son, shows how low you all are and proves the point of how bad it would have been. It would be it would be Ben I won. Uh, I totally agree. No one should come after anyone's family. That's Family should be off limits, guys. I don't care how upset you are. Leave everyone's family, their children, their spouses, whatever. Leave them out of all this. Number five. You had no conditioning for stage. That's just the truth. You couldn't control breathing. Again, true. I don't know why the truth offends you, LOL. Now, I'll end this with to the Brazilian people who are in my DMs and welcoming and continue to show love. I appreciate you all 100%. To the keyboard warriors, you guys need help, LOL. Do I think Rafa has a great physique? I said that multiple times on the podcast. I said he wasn't ready. But again, I understand passion. But listen before talking. Again, Olympia Qual will come. and Let's see what that conditioning gets. This could have been a friendly battle like we do, but instead disrespect has to be used. All the hate that's coming, thank you for further proving my point. You guys, this mad because you think with emotions, imagine if your God lost, I would gut it 100% more, 100 times more. Uh, uh, and this is to clear up. I, I had Giles and I did a preview on the show. It's on the same cha- It's on our channel that we posted Wednesday afternoon. Detroit Pro because we wanted Tonio to do the show. I mean, he looked great in Brazil. I wouldn't say it was going to be an easy win because Martin Fitzwater, good veto, 
Justin Rodriguez. They're all excellent competitors, but very strong chance Tonio could have gone to Detroit, picked up a win, $25,000 in an Olympia qualification. And he was undecided when I was talking to him Wednesday. He was still undecided when I was texting with him. Uh, so this was posted yesterday. Clearing the speculation here after having a day home in the U.S. with my family, Tony and I spoke and decided, oh, that's his coach posting this, Jay Jacoby, uh, decided we would push to make it for Detroit. Unfortunately, we were too late getting our name and contract in, even with the help of Ben and Fouad. We unfortunately were turned down by the IPB due, due to the deadline. Rules are rules, and we respect that. Unfortunately, that's how it is at times. But we did try, y'all. We just needed a little more to make this, a little time to make this decision, make the decision. We honestly felt so strongly going into Arnold Classic Brazil that a backup plan wasn't needed. Lesson learned for us moving forward. So that's unfortunate. I certainly wanted to see him in Detroit uh, be a better show with him in it. There's no doubt. Okay, let's go to your comments, guys. Let's go. I said Tony will join Detroit. Yeah, I mean, he wanted to, and as you just saw, they tried to get into Detroit, and they were told by IPB Pro League, you waited too late, and now we, we're not going to let you in. So Tonio, he waited a few days before he asked to, to do the show, and by then it was too late. He was told, sorry, you can't do it. It's, it's unfortunate. Uh, Stupor hero. I won't compete Brazil. Tonio should have won, and I'm glad that he's talking about this. I had Tonio first, Vito second. Yeah, we're going to see Vito again. Sunday in Detroit. So good veto gets another look. Raymond Jones says the results seem fixed to me from the start. Uh, I mean, if they were fixed, Vito would have been second because Vito is hugely popular in Brazil. He's not a Brazilian native, but he's sort of been adopted by the Brazilian fans because he's lived there for a few years now. Uh, he's from Russia and he speaks fluent Portuguese. I think he's married to a, a Brazilian woman. So uh, if, it, if it had been fixed, I think you could have slid Vito in there. You know, obviously people would have been in up in arms because Tonio, especially from the back, he kills Vito. Vito's back needs a lot more thickness. Tonio's got a crazy thick back. But I hear what you're saying. Um, give Tonio credit for not pulling a Nathan or Hadi on stage. Sure. Yeah, you should never never display unsportsmanlike behavior on stage. Um, but, you know, these things that he said there, he really – I understand he was upset and still is upset, and I, I understand he feels he was treated unfairly. But it's it's just it's not a good look to complain like that. It just it's just not a good look. I mean, you know, I could hear you guys argue the other way. Like, what's he supposed to do? Just you know, take it, take the take the uh, screw job and shut up about it. I'm not saying that, but I mean, if you just come back so good next time that there's no way there'd be like a riot if you lost. I mean, obviously it was Brazil, so had you didn't hear like a huge uproar when he lost. Um, but even when I was watching it, I had no no horse in that race. I'm a fan of both guys. I appreciate both of their physiques very much. I'm not close personal friends with either one of them. If anything, I've interviewed Tonio many more times than I've interviewed Rafael. Um, but still, I didn't get upset. I wasn't like, what? I didn't freak out when, when Rafael won because I see why you could make the argument. Yes, conditioning is a very, very important factor. It's not everything. But you guys are you guys are probably going to argue back and forth about that. So let's keep going. Tony was just bitching and acting like sore loser. Rafael beat him fair and square. Says despicable me. Our stuff says my memory's bad. I think there's an athlete last year that couldn't compete because he was slightly late. Uh, who was that? Did that happen to Cedric one year? If Tony o places ahead of Rafael at the O, then I think speculation will grow in Brazil. Uh, well, I mean, the Olympia is a different show. And we have, geez, it's, it's in October. So we have... Six months? Yeah, we got a whole six months before the Olympia. A lot of these guys, either one of them or both of them could improve. One might improve and the other one doesn't. So it's it's kind of uh, silly to assume they're both going to look exactly the same. One of them one of them or both of them might look better. One or both of them might look worse at the Olympia. We have no idea what's going to look. Not provide, Cody Joss is not providing well as BS. Well, you heard Raphael's side of that, that nobody was back. Apparently there was no, – he claims – Raphael says there was nobody – Nobody backstage in charge of oiling up competitors. Uh, usually, I, I guess they didn't, maybe they didn't have a sponsor. Typically, if a tanning company like Pro Tan or Liquid Sunrays, typically if there's a tanning company that's sponsoring the show, they have staff backstage doing touch-ups, people's tans, and helping them oil. I don't know if they had, it doesn't sound like they had anybody like that doing that at this show. Charles Gamble says, best thing for Tony to do, qualify for Olympia and beat him there. He lost in a subjective sport. Get over it. Yeah, which is, I, I agree. 
it's it's not like other sports. It's more like a beauty pageant. It's in the eye of the beholder. It's subjective. Judges have their opinions on what they you know what they like. Some judges might value or prioritize condition more than another one. Another one might be more of a shape fan. Another one might go for more of the mass guys. You know, this is why they throw out two scores. So a perfect score is a five on the score sheet um, for both the judging and the finals, both of those rounds. But there are seven judges, so that means the high score and the low score are thrown out. So that's supposed to avoid anybody being way out of whack with what all the other judges are seeing. That, that's what that's meant to do. And this is also – I agree, Charles. This is why I wish he had – him and his coach had decided to do Detroit uh, – like a day earlier, maybe where he'd be, he really should be in this show. Like I said, it's, I, I am not dis, I don't want to put disrespect on anybody, Martin, Vito, uh, Justin, anybody else by saying Tony would win, but Tony almost beat Raphael, who was third at the Arnold to Hadi Chupan and Samson Dauda. So, very, very, very strong chance Tony would have won this $25,000 first prize. You know, I'm, I'm actually a little disappointed at the lineup. If Fouad went out of his way to make – he he did what the athletes wanted. They wanted more money. So these shows have been $10,000. Now it's $15,000 minimum for, for any show. But Fouad came out of the gate with twenty five k, and he's giving away three different additional awards for late at the late John Meadows, Cedric McMillan, uh, and Luke Sando, all $2,500 each. So maybe Tony would have picked up one of those. There's 27.5, 27 and a half grand he could have made. Uh, someone corrected me on the last one because I said on the power hour with Giles, it was only a two-hour flight from, from Reno, Nevada. Okay, it's closer to four hours, whatever. A four-hour flight. So Tonio did want to do it, but uh, applied too late, and the IPB Pro League turned down his application to do the show. So now we have only six guys doing the show. Uh, Despicable Me. What a great movie. Also, there's no way in hell Raphael's team congratulated Tonio. That's a straight lie. Yeah, why would Raphael's team come up to him and say, you got this, bro? I mean, I'd be pretty upset if those that was my team and they went up to, to the guy that was very close to very close to me getting all the call-outs and congratulated him. I don't know. I'm not calling anybody a liar. It just it does that does sound fishy. Uh, Raymond Jones, if the claims Tony made a true Rafa didn't definitely didn't win fair and square. I think there's a lot of accusations back and forth between these two guys. Rafa didn't address why he was able to walk off stage and wipe off. No. He must have missed that. I'm sure he wrote that kind of in haste. Also, it was translated. But, yeah, he, maybe he should have addressed that. It's not uncommon for a competitor to be aggressive on stage. Breon and Seabone through elbows. Yeah, I remember, was it the 2014 Olympia? Kai and Phil, 14 or 15, where they were up, up on stage and they had turned their backs to the audience for a back shot, and Kai whipped his braid. He's got that long, heavy hair braid. He whipped it and smacked Phil with his hair braid, which, you know, come on, that was deliberately <laughs> antagonizing Phil. But we've seen a lot with the guys with the elbows. And he did – Tonio was right about one thing. That's one That's one thing that Weinberger does not tolerate. If guys are bumping each other, Steve, Steve – <laughs> he's very, very quick to say, knock it off, knock it off, guys. Cut it out with the elbows, knock it off. And they listen. Big, You listen when Big Steve talks. You don't keep keep aggravating him like that. Uh, throwing elbows is cheating. Doesn't matter. It's common. It's just there's no re there's no need for it. I mean, and also the expediters should be spacing these guys out a little further apart. I understand you don't want them too far apart, but they shouldn't be so close that their elbows are whacking into each other either. I know it's not easy because you can't tell how 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 far guys' elbows are going to go when they're when you're lining them up on stage. Some guys have longer arms and they're wider, so whack whack whack. But yeah. Uh, glute lumps. I didn't look for it. Um, I have, I want to see, I still haven't looked at the high res images. I don't even know where they are. I didn't see any on NPC news online. Do any of you guys have any of you guys seen a gallery, a photo gallery? I didn't see it in the stream, but, uh, the, the YouTube video, which was a live, live broadcast for free. So props to Tamara for that. Um, no, I didn't see it in that, but the resolution wasn't great on that. If you guys, any of you know where there are high resolution images from the show, because all I've seen is, you know, people's iPhone pictures from 10th, 20th row, which aren't great. Uh, we got next up, Chunk Iron Chest. Did Arnold US and now UK team also control the show? 
it was a name formed out like it was in UK a couple of years ago. Um, I'm assuming that, well, yeah, it was produced. So the Arnold USA and the Arnold UK, if you go to arnoldsports.com, those two shows and all the information for them were there. This show was produced uh, by Muscle Contest, Muscle Contest International, uh, which puts on shows in the U.S. like the USA, but they also put on a ton of shows in Brazil, uh, the, the El Gundy brothers. And, yeah, I believe it was independently promoted, farmed out. Arnold was not at their show. His son, Joe Baina, was there, made a little speech on stage, came up, and Arnold did not go to this one. Despicable Me. That's next. Luckily, Tono didn't open his mouth well in Brazil. He would have been another Michael DeBool. Oh, well, that's not funny. So Michael, yeah, Michael got beat up. The very next day in the UK, Michael DeBool, uh, Arnold UK Classic Physique winner from last year, I think it was, uh, went backstage as soon as the show ended to see his girlfriend who had just competed, Bikini Pro, Petra, and was beaten severely by four security guards. So, yeah. Ditch Comfort says, Tony o should have won the Brazilian show. Cheers to Norway. Yeah, I mean, you can argue it both ways. You can argue Tony o winning. I would not have been upset at all, at all, if Tony o had won. I could make a case for both guys. And that's the problem with a subjective sport like bodybuilding. Sometimes there is no clear-cut winner. You might think so because you value certain attributes over others. Like I said, you might think the bigger guy might win, should win, or the more ripped guy should win, or the guy with better shape. Everyone's got their own agenda. Everyone's got their own uh, uh, preferences, opinions. So, and you know, judges are people too. Judges have their own opinions. Not every judge sees things exactly the same way, which is why Rafael did not win with a perfect score. He got a six, which means at least one judge gave him first place. I mean, gave Tonio first place. I think someone did the math and figured out that Tonio must have gotten two first places. Yeah, so that's probably more likely that Two judges gave Tonio first place and five judges gave Rafael first place. That would make sense. Correct me if I'm wrong, guys. I'm wrong all the time. What happened in 2015, Despicable Me? Uh, uh, IIRC? I don't know. I don't know what IIRC means. Sorry. I lost a lot of respect for Tonio being a sore loser. It's in defeat that you really see the true character. Yeah, I mean... Look, guys, I totally get that he's upset, and I, I totally get that he could look at it as he was so, he was screwed over, uh, injustice was given to him, but you know, you're, you're complaining about these judges who are – they're IPB Pro League judges. They all – they were all selected to be there. They all legitimately belonged on that judging panel, whether he knew who they were or not. They don't let just anybody judge pro shows. Like in the U.S., there's a whole – you have to go through a whole process – you have to start out test judging at NPC shows at, at regional level. Then you become a regional NPC judge. Then if they think you're good enough at that, you can be a national judge. And then eventually, if you're really good and you want to, uh, you can be a pro, pro judge. And, you know, and that goes up the ladder where the Olympia judges and the Olympia and the Arnold Classic judges are the highest echelon of judges. You'll see the same few faces over and over again because those are the most experienced, noteworthy judges in the sport. But, yeah. It's it's not a good thing to go after and say these the judges did a terrible job and you know I was I was screwed. It's it's, just, it's not a good look. It's just not. Uh, Rafa got mad. Tonio plugged the toilet. All started there, obviously. Yeah, I mean that was kind of kind of an uncouth thing for Rafael to post. I mean, who among us hasn't clogged the toilet in our lifetimes? You know, got to take a big dump. What are you going to do? He's probably backed up. Probably had probably dehydrated. And did a big dump. I don't know. E EP zero online bodybuilding. I'm looking forward to moving on from this topic on to Detroit Pro in New York. Overall, this is net negative for bodybuilding. Yeah, it's it's funny how some people are happy about it because they say, "Oh boy, here's some excitement. Here's some drama. A feud, a beef. It's like WWE. It brings excitement to the sport." I'm trying to think of the last time. The last time we had something like this. Uh, was probably 2021 in the springtime leading up to the New York Pro between uh, Blessing Awodibu and Nick Walker. Uh, they were going at each other. You know, you suck, you suck, I'll beat you, I'll beat you. But that was more of a friendly rivalry. And it wasn't like arguing that 
somebody that you beat me and I shouldn't. It wasn't like this. It was very, very different. And that was more exciting because that was more like WWE, like, you know, wait till I see you at SummerSlam or wait till WrestleMania, blah, blah, blah. You know, that that's what that was. That was hyping up the show. This is after the show. And I think it leaves a bad taste in everybody's mouth. Uh, but some people, you know, some people hate to see this. It's like we're being catty and, and focusing on the negative and talking crap about the judges and favoritism in a country towards their their athlete and you know an athlete from another country in this case the USA being done dirty. I you know it's it's not a good it's not a great thing overall. I agree and you know I'm only reporting on it because I have to. That's my job. I you know this is a YouTube channel. I'm trying to get it going and for me to ignore a big story like this. Wouldn't be doing wouldn't be doing myself any services. I mean, Joe's a bad look for IPB for sure. Yeah, I mean, guys coming out, Tonio's coming out. I, it's a bad look. Wh whoever side you're on, whether you're on Rafael's side, you're you're saying you know this guy's a sore loser. And he's talking shit about the judges. If you're on Tonio's side, it's a bad look because you're saying you if you believe if you believe him and you know you believe he was screwed over then that means there is favoritism towards certain athletes at the expense of others. And that's not a good look either. So, well, you don't ditch. You don't like Rafa's physique. Sorry. You don't have to say sorry to me. You like what you like. You don't have to like anybody's physique. <laughs> if a competitor is mistreated, he should be vocal about it. See, some people will say he should keep his mouth shut. Just go back to the gym, work harder and come back better. Some people say, no, no, you should, you shouldn't just take it lying down. You should, you know, like Sean Ray back in the day, Sean was very vocal. You know, when guys like Dorian would come in off or with the torn bicep and still beat everybody, uh, especially, you know, Sean was like, good. Good cases could be made for Sean. I think it was 96 when he was second that you could have had him beating Dorian there. That was one of those years Dorian was off and he had, he had a torn bicep at that point, you know, and Sean, Sean didn't take it lying down. Sean stood up for himself and said, no, this isn't right. And Sean used to say, why do we have the same judges at the Olympia every year? There should be a rotation of them because – same judges every year are just going to keep picking the same guy. These are all, they all have the same exact ideals and opinions and, and standards and so forth. So here we go. Mark says, Tony just sucked it up, use the loss as fuel and come back undeniable rather than crying on the, on the results on a podcast. This generation is so damn soft. It's crazy. Yeah. You could look at it that way. I mean, but that's, that's the nature of, we have all this social media now, you know, back in the old days, if somebody was unhappy about, the results of a contest, uh, if they lost, and they, how, who were they going to tell? They could complain about it to their friends, to whoever, even to like writers, reporters, but it's not like anybody would hear about it for at least a very long time. Maybe they would quote them in a gossip column, you know, a month or two after the show in a magazine, but now everything's instant. The athletes have instant access to all their fans, all the other fans. It gets spread by other, other outlets. There's all these other outlets on Instagram and you know, Facebook especially Instagram, they cover the sport and they'll they'll pick out quotes and they'll say, they'll point out that this guy just complained or whatever. It's it's, it's not like it used to be. Superhero, Ron, you've always been a great advocate for Biden. I appreciate being awesome. You the great work, great content. Thank you, Superhero. Appreciate that, man. I appreciate that very much. And guys, if you like this channel, please subscribe, like, share, and ring that bell. Very important. Then you know when we're having lives. I, I always want to do these on Fridays. Hair looking good. <laughs> Thanks, Chuck. Yeah, it's coming in. You can see it's still it's still thin, but it's coming in. So where it's thin here, that's where I had no hair. They transplanted that from the back of my head. Um, I'll show, the top is not looking fantastic. Top, can you see? Yeah, the top has a, a much poorer blood supply. So it's only got a 50% success rate, the trend, any hair transplant, for the crown area versus this is like 90 but thank you. Let's go back to this. Was Rafa inciting xenophobia by saying, respect my country? I mean, he loves his country, and he felt that Tonio was disrespecting it by saying that he felt uh, threatened, like uh, endangered. If he, if he had won, he would have been in fear for some, quarter, some sort of retribution or reprisal on the part of the Brazilian fans. Also saying that the judges, basically saying the judges are crooked, corrupt. You know, they, they picked a guy from their country who didn't deserve the win. So, you know, he has every right to feel that way. You have every right to feel your way. You know, we're all entitled to our opinions. This generation is full of drama queens. Samson, now Tony, just suck it up and move along. Drama queens, yeah. 
Cody says, Rafa is the drama queen. Mad, he's mad Tony will plug the toilet. We keep going back to the toilet. That's where the beef started. I don't know if it was, he didn't specify. Was it too much poop or did he put, throw too much paper down there? You know, my gym, can you see the Bayshore Athletic Club? Oh, I got to get rid of that bell thing. Bayshore, where's the logo? Oh, there it is. Yeah. Gosh, I can't do things reverse. Somebody always, I walk in the bathroom, there's like four stalls. And the one on the left is almost always clogged. Someone's always either taking massive dumps or throwing way too much toilet paper in there. Pisses me off. I get Sometimes if that's the only one and I got to go poop, I go in there. I, there's a plunger next to it. They keep a plunger there because I think it gets clogged up a lot. So there's been more than a few occasions where I have to un, 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 pl plunge the toilet. Uh, Raymond says, I've heard Ronnie and Jay Cutler disagree with their placing at least one show. Yeah. I mean, there have been, there have been shows. I mean, a few examples just pop out. You know, I had 2009 Olympia where, uh, no, it's 2009, 2007 Olympia, Victor Martinez and Jay Cutler. A lot of people felt Jay won that show. I'm sorry, Victor won that show, and Jay was given a gift. A lot of people were upset about that. Um, let's see. It's been a few. There's been a few shows. I remember the last year. So was it 2010? The last year, Phil took second to Jay. A lot of people had Phil winning that year. In fact, when Jay was announced winner, half the crowd immediately got up. This is when it was at the Orleans. Half the crowd immediately got up and ran started making for the exits without even listening. They didn't even want to hear Jay's acceptance speech. Uh, you can think of more. There's plenty more instances, usually at the Olympia level, but there've been shows where decisions have been kind of questionable for sure. Our star Brazil has a history of corruption. Tony had it. Tony just needs to work on the side triceps in my opinion. He needs more chest. You know, I love Tony's physique. I really do. I think he's a work in progress. Uh, more tricep mass and fullness and more chest thickness. That's one area branding, Brandon, Brandau really, really had him in was the chest. Um, you know, Tonio's still a fairly young guy. He's just a few shows in as a pro. He'll, he's got time to, to make these improvements from the back. He's, he's lights out. Yeah. I would like to see a little more separation of the hamstrings, but as far as from the waist up, his back is just, it's insane. It's I, I'm trying to think of who has a better back. Maybe Derek Lunsford is the only one I can think of right now. Anybody else? Who else has a better back than Antonio and Derek? Hit the likes for Ron. Thank you. Hit the likes. And guys, share these on your social media would help me out a lot. There's a share thing on the bottom underneath the screen. You can do that. You can share it to your Facebook, your Twitter, if you have a Twitter, whatever the X, whatever it's called now. Yeah. Or YouTube. Tony versus Nick is a friendly rivalry. Tony was looking to be a rival with Rob. He's upset he was cheated. Yeah, I, 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 I agree that Tony versus Nick. Oh, so you're talking about the, the rivalry going to New York Pro. Yeah, I think they both have plenty of respect for each other. And, you know, it's Nick's going to be very hard to beat, man. Very, very hard to beat. The guy was Arnold Classic U.S. champion. He's a New York pro champion, as is Tonio, as is Tonio. Um, and he's third at the Olympia. That that tells you how great, how great he is. I mean, third place at the Olympia. And that was when it was Hottie. Hottie won that year, and then it was Derek. No, no, Derek won. Who was second place the year uh, Nick won? And Nick got third. It wasn't Derek. Was it? Yeah, I think it was Derek. It was Derek. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because Derek did the guest posing in 2022 in Pittsburgh where everybody freaked out about how huge he was. Then he got the special invite. Yeah. Despicable me. If Rafael was favored for being Brazilian, same thing happened to Derek. He was American and won Mitchell in between three. I don't buy that, though. Well, I mean, we'll look at 2022. He took second. He took second. Yeah, 2022. He took second place to Hadi. Why didn't they? Why would they favor an Iranian? I mean, there's no love for Iran. Iran in the USA. Trust me, none. <laughs> the countries, our country's been at odds for like 40 years now. Um, since since they had the Shah, which they got rid of him in 1979, and the Iranian, the, the Ayatollah Khomeini at the time took over, made it a fundamentalist Islamic society again, or a government again. Uh, we've had no diplomatic relations with Iran for 45 years now. Wow. Uh, Derek more marketable? Absolutely, yes. Phil was super pissed after losing to Sean Roden. He went on Arx Muscle and did a similar thing that Tonio did. Yeah, 
yeah, it's not uncommon for people to disagree. You know, you have to believe you're the best. And if you came in, uh, if you came in at your very best and you were in great shape, yeah, I can understand why you felt you should have won, even though in that in that case it was Phil's hernia and he was having a lot of trouble controlling his midsection. It was it was starting to pop out a lot toward the end of that show during the, the final stage of the uh, judging because he was getting tired and he just couldn't keep it controlled anymore. Yeah. He never said anything about the toilet. <laughs> uh, he never said anything about the toilet until weeks later, just uninvited without saying why. Rafa definitely felt threatened. Yeah, it's they, they both have Brazilian sponsors. Um, I don't know, I can't recall who brought who, who Brandao was with, but uh, Tony was with Dragon Farmer. They're out of Brazil, so they're both you know working for Brazilian companies. Tony needs separation to be a threat to anybody. I do want to see more separation. He's a work in progress, more muscle maturity. He's very very lean, but yeah. I'd like to see deeper, clearer cuts between the muscle groups, for sure. Tony, the top eight, stop the cap. So is Raphael. <laughs> yeah, they're both great. They're both great. Uh, I don't know what the cap was about. What, what was I capping or lying about? I don't know. I mean, Nick's, Nick Walker's a top three Olympian, which is a lot better than top eight. Stevie McNeckbeard says, bitches. <laughs> Cody Jolly, Prof was cool. He was just posted on Instagram and made a joke about Tony plugging the toilet before the show. I mean, <laughs> this toilet thing's taking on a life of its own. Phil didn't even deserve second place 2018. Rory should have been second. Who's Rory? I don't know who you meant by I don't know who you mean by Rory. There's no Rory. Who do you mean, Phil? Because you said Finn, and I know you meant Phil. I think your keyboard's acting up on you. I don't know. Uh Let's see. Was there anything else on Facebook that I had taken pictures of? No, I don't think so. Try preview. Yeah, I just want to put this as I'll just put this up there for a second. So this is my top three. Top three in no particular order. For Detroit, I have top three, no particular order. The Martian, Marvin, Martin, Marvin, Marvin the Martian, but his name is Martin. Martin Fitzwater, Vitaly Ogulnikov, a.k.a. Good Vito, and Justin Rodriguez. Uh, there's my top three. If you're going to put a gun to my head, and please don't, I would probably have Martin winning because he's more complete. Vito still needs back thickness. Uh, between these two, I don't know, man. Vito's a lot thicker than, than Justin. Justin, when he's on, is very tough. That, that's going to be very, very close between those two guys. Uh, yeah. Let's go back. Let's see if though. Flex loses there and handed out the trophy. Rafa and Flex sold over 100,000 units. Wow. Oh, there's something packs 48 hours before they're on Brazil. Amazing. What company is he with? Oh, Rolly Winkler. That's who you're talking about when you said Rory. Yeah, Roly got third that year. Roly looked great. That's the best he's ever looked. That's the year he got um, people champion. Yeah. Go to, let's see what's going on with uh, Raphael on his Instagram. Just real briefly. I'm just curious. Well, is there anything in his stories? Uh, let's go to there. Search screen. All right, let's want to take a look and see if he's got any more updates. Uh, I can't read that. Are we selling an ebook? Sixty-nine thousand dollars, geez, or whatever unit of money currency they have in Brazil. I don't know. Lex Lewis, Max Titanium. Okay, so that's their company, Max Titanium. Brando Flex Creatine. They have a product together. I did not know that. Gane uma camiseta. Is win, win a shirt. I can. It's close enough to the Spanish that I can. I can understand it. I, I understand Spanish pretty well. Portuguese has a lot in common. Segundo is second. I don't know what Lote is. <laughs> I don't know who this older gentleman is. I assume he owns that supplement company. That's some BMX crap. I'm just wondering if there were any updates. There he is, kissing his wife's belly. Karen must be a baby in there. Another baby. 
Because he's having another child. God bless him. Yeah, we don't need to keep harping on <laughs> Brando. <laughs> oh boy, yeah, 100,000 units sold. Unless, it, wow, that's a lot of units to sell. Uh, what the heck are they selling? Is this is a creatine? I don't know what it is. Brando Flex creatine, I guess. Huh, interesting. All right, well, we'll stop. I don't want to make it all about Raphael. Let's see. IP seems to be really fair and transparent, just adding constructive criticism. Yeah, and, you know, I, I, I could see why you could make a case for possibly there was favoritism exhibited. I mean, there, there are a lot of a lot of things that would indicate that that's a possibility. I'm not saying it was or it wasn't. I, I, I need more evidence. I need more evidence. We don't have all the facts. We don't have all the evidence. If you were trying to make this a case, you would need to hear all the evidence. We don't have that. So he sold all that only days before the Arm Brazil. Yeah, but I mean, they didn't promote the... Uh... <laughs> don't ignore the toilet incident. Oh, beef always starts somewhere. I mean, if someone came to my house, it was his gym. If someone came to my house, you know, I have two toilets, but still, if someone clogged up like my main, my master bathroom toilet, I'd be pretty upset. You know, so, you got to go in there and plunge it. This would be worse if it overflowed on the floor or something like that. That would be much, much worse than just having to plunge it out. That's gross enough, but to have to clean it off your floor, oh, gross, gross stuff, guys. Yeah. <laughs> Man. Um, so we got the Detroit Pro coming up. There's a preview on this channel. And Giles and I spent like the first 15 minutes talking about Tonio doing it, uh, why he should do it. We were hoping he was going to do it. Unfortunately, he waited too long to make the decision. And by the time him and his coach decided, yeah, let's do it, um, it was too late. They would not. The IPB Pro League says you missed the deadline. And that's unfortunate. It, it, would, be a, it would be a better show with him in it. He's missing out on what could have been a $25,000 payday. Plus, like I said, they're giving out another three different awards to competitors for, uh, I, I don't know what their name, what they're based off, their, if, whether it's posing or what, but one's Luke Sandow, one's John Meadows, and one's Cedric McMillan, three of our fallen warriors in bodybuilding over the past few years. So props to Fuad for giving out $25,000 just for first, and then there's more prize money for second, third, fourth, fifth. Uh, and then these additional $2,500. So he did that for Wad. He came up with more money than a lot of the smaller show promoters do. And he addressed the whole black curtain issue. Remember everyone was saying, well, we want black, plain black curtains like the old days so we can really appreciate the physiques. No one would do that because they don't want, they don't want to lose uh, opportunities for the sponsors to have signage on the stage. And, you know, those LED screens, they do look pretty fancy. They look like a big glitzy Las Vegas show. It's very, very high-tech looking and cool. So Fouad listened to the fans, listened to the athletes. He gave them what they wanted, came up with more money, came up with a plain black screen, a plain black backdrop on stage. And still, he's only got six guys going to this show. So I applaud Martin Fitzwater, Good Vito, Justin Rodriguez, Harry Harris from the UK, Ronald Gordon from the USA, and Gabriel, Gabriel Gavietti from Canada for committing to the show and doing the show. And more guys – should have done the show. They they're passing up a great opportunity. Um, but you know, let's give let's give Fuad some props for for doing a really good job. The show hasn't happened yet, but he's he's already showing that he wants to make a good show for these guys and for the fans. Uh, let's close it out. Raphael, Rafael, so still I still do Tony on stage makes sense now that you know about the toilet it's <laughs> Yeah, Fuad is a polarizing character. I I can't really think, you know, I I don't know why people dislike Fuad if it's not just plain jealousy that he's done so well with his podcast, Bro Chat. I'm envious of that. I wish I could have a podcast with that kind of reception. Uh, supplement company, Hostile, he's done very well with that. Um, he's had a great career after retiring from bodybuilding, and I don't know if it's just jealousy. I don't know why anybody dislikes him, to be honest. I mean, I've never had a problem with him. Yeah, I could see some some people don't like them. Maybe it's ath athletes that wanted to be paid. They wanted that hostile nutrition contract. They wanted the money like, you know, Samson Dowd is getting a nice check every month. Sam Sullock's getting a nice check every month. Uh, 
Mick Walker was. He let Mick Walker go. But I'm just saying everybody wants to be sponsored. Everybody wants their money. So maybe if there were negotiations and it fell through, I don't know. You'd think one of his current or former sponsored athletes would do the show. I mean, obviously Samson would be a logical choice, but no. I mean, obviously Samson just did the two Arnold shows in the U.S. and the U.K. He was burnt out. He needed a break. And, you know, a $25,000 first prize when he was just competing for a $400,000 first prize in uh, in Ohio. It's, it's, it's kind of kind of like chump change. Oh, boy. Anyway, guys, uh, I'm going to say goodbye. Did this one a little earlier today. Couldn't wait. Also want to give the Brazilians, if any of the Brazilians, you know, I don't speak Portuguese, so I, I don't think we had too many people from Port from Brazil watching. I don't speak Portuguese. But uh, uh, whether you whether you agreed with Tonio and feeling he was treated unfairly or whether you feel that Rafael was a rightful winner, I don't think anybody can say def definitively one way or another that you're wrong. I think everyone has their opinion. Obrigado, obrigado. Yeah, that's, that's, about, that's almost all the Portuguese I speak right there. Uh, like I said, it's a, it's a subjective sport. You're going to have different judges with different opinions who see things differently from show to show which is why you'll see guys go from one show to another week to week looking almost the same, very close to the way they looked the week before. And, and the places will change because the judges see things differently. So you never know, guys. And uh, anyway, I appreciate you guys watching very much. Uh, I'm going to do an, uh, a Ron line I did with George Farah talking about his new documentary, The Guru, is coming up tomorrow. Please check that out. I'll be posting that. If you have your notifications on, you'll see that. And what else? We got that Power Hour Detroit Pro Preview talking about each and every one of the guys that's doing the show, even Tony, who ended up not doing it. So please check those out on this channel. And, of course, subscribe, like, share, ring that bell. And what else did I want to bother you to do? Follow me on Instagram at Ron Harris Muscle. Yeah, I've been stuck at, stuck at under 30,000 followers for like 20 years now. It's terrible. Anyway, guys, appreciate you guys watching so much. Uh, I hope you all have an awesome weekend and that's it. Thanks for watching this week's live show. We'll see you next time.